Hi everyone, Ted Wyman here with another edition of On the Rocks and today we are joined by a very special guest, Glenn Howard of the wildcard number three team at the Briar. Uh, Glenn, uh, really great to see you here today. I didn't see you curling though. No, no. <laughs> so can you just give us an idea of what's going on there? I know you've got some uh, a rib injury. Yeah, thanks very much for having me, Ted. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, and to be honest with you, I'm thankful to be here in Calgary. I had a, a pretty serious uh, snowmobile accident over a month ago. Um, had spent a bunch of spent a bunch of days in the hospital. I actually broke nine ribs. Um, yeah, nine ribs. I cracked a sternum. I um, I did a couple other things. So I, I did a number of myself, and it was it was it was pretty bad. I uh, uh, to be honest with you, very thankful um, I'm here. I, um, I I hit a tree on a snowmobile, and uh, my body hit the tree, and. Uh, my uh, helmet was cracked and um, wasn't good, so it wasn't good. I uh, it was it was it was pretty bad. And uh, anyway, long story short, I'm uh, I recovered nicely, and I'm uh, I then knew um, after that happened, we knew that um, you know the chances of me curling were pretty slim. Um, that's when uh, we got a hold of Wayne Mada. We knew we had to try to fill my shoes, and uh, couldn't have picked a better guy. We know he's going to make a ton of shots. Uh, I I can curl. I was able to throw a few rocks before we got here in Calgary. I've thrown a few since I've been here, probably only maybe 50 rocks um, in the last uh, last week or so. And of course, nothing for two or three months prior to that. Um, so I could curl. I'm not ready by any stretch. So it didn't make any sense. Like we're, we're here to win. It's not about me just throwing rocks up and down. So uh, it made total sense to have Wayne skipping. And uh, that's what we're going to do. And uh, who knows, maybe it might get into a game here and there. But if I don't, I don't. And it uh, doesn't matter. I'm totally at peace with that because... Uh, like I said, I, uh, I'm just happy to be here. Well, it's kind of an incredible story all the way around, uh, Glenn, because we, we all know Wayne had a terrible skiing accident about five years ago and broke his leg in 11 places. He's got a titanium rod in there, two years of recovery. And then, you know, unfortunately you have an accident and it brings him back into the briar, which is something, I mean, one year ago, I don't think he ever thought that would possibly happen again. I, I, to be honest with you, Ted, I think five years ago, he wasn't sure he was going to ever be, uh, you know, playing in a, in a briar again, uh, just because of the severity of his injury. He wasn't sure how, if, if he was going to be able to curl and it took him, he was a good solid two years before he could even throw a rock. Uh, but now he's back at it. And uh, he's, he's a, a, literally the old phrase kid in a candy store. He is just a happy camper to be out competing. He's one of the most, if not the most competitive guys I've ever met. He's coming here to win this, and he's going to do everything he can in, within his power to make this happen. And uh, that's what I love about him, and that, it just totally makes sense. And he's the type of guy that he doesn't need to throw a thousand rocks a day. He does it here. He, he's muscle memory. He knows how to make shots. He knows how to adapt. He knows how to be a good teammate. And um, it is kind of ironic, though. Like you said, uh, uh, you know, an injury took him out because we were go we were going to our provincial um, just before he broke his broke his leg. And uh, lo and behold, here I am. I, I injure myself, and he's back in the mix. So uh, we kind of we kind of laughed at between the two bodies. We got one pretty good one, but uh, <laughs> individually they're not perfect. But <laughs> I had a chance to talk to Brad Jacobs and Mark Kennedy today after their game, and and I just asked them what it kind of meant to see Wayne out there again, and and they both used the term legend, and yeah. they both said they kind of grew up watching him, and that his enthusiasm really was one of the things that they loved about the game as they were growing up. Uh, you know, it, it's more than just an impact on your team. It's the whole curling community, I'm sure, that, that is really happy to see this. Well, you know, I, I, I'm really glad to hear that, Ted. Uh, he has, he's been, he's a legend. He's, he's been iconic in our sport. Uh, you know, he's three-time world champion, uh, uh, one of the best pure shot makers in, in history. And to have him back out here playing at 53 years old is, is incredible. And I, I really, I really believe he deserves that respect. And uh, it's really cool to hear that coming from, uh, you know, the Jacobs and the Kennedys of the world who are arguably the best curlers in the world. And they're saying, Hey, this is, this is one of the guys we look up to. And I love to hear that because he deserves every, every ounce of that, those comments. And uh, I hope everybody feels that way. Cause he is, he's, he's been one of those guys that um, we've all watched. Uh, obviously I'm a little older than him, but I, and I've been fortunately won, won a couple of world championships with him. So he's one of those guys you want on your team as opposed to playing against them. So, uh, but it's really great to hear that uh, some of the guys are, are making those comments. I love that. Well, I remember talking to you a few times this year as the curling season was starting and stopping and starting and stopping. And uh, the idea of the 18 team field for the Briar was, was coming out. 
and you were sure looking forward to this. I mean, uh, to this opportunity. I know you felt like your team deserved to be here, and and you really wanted to to be a part of it. So, how is that sitting with you? You know that you're not able to to be a part of it as much as you wanted to. Yeah, it's funny, Ted. I was obviously like I think I mentioned to you before in all our previous interviews that you know every time I get to a briar, I just I consider it my last. You just never know. Uh, I've been blessed with being able to get to a bunch, and you know as I get older and I'm getting along in the tooth, uh, you know, to have another opportunity was really exciting, and and obviously we're super stoked to get here. Uh, it, obviously, it's disappointing. Don't I can't I can't deny the fact that I you know sitting behind the bench as a coach, you want to be out there playing, and that's just the way it is. But I. I'm totally at peace with it, mainly because of how it happened. Again, I, I still consider myself so lucky that uh, it could have been a lot worse, this accident. Um, and I realize that puts in perspective. It's, it's, just, it's just another curling game. It's another briar, whatever the case may be. Do I want to curl? Absolutely do I want to curl. But uh, it makes total sense that I don't. Um, if I get in a game, fine. But I, yeah, you know, your competitive juices and the way you're brought up, like, I always want to curl. I want to compete. I want to be out there no matter what. Heck, watching the Scotties, I wanted to be out there. Like, it's just when you see curling, you, you want to get going and, and play. And But I'm, I'm again, I'm, I'm at peace with it because of uh, the circumstances and because I know what could have been. And uh, I, I, I I'm count my lucky stars. Well, you're here and you're part of it. And, you know, you've been a coach before. You've coached mm -hmm. at the Olympics. You've coached all over the place. So you know that role. But someone else is calling the shots. You know, how does that work with your, in your mind? Do you, you know, do you have to sort of, I'm not saying question necessarily what he's doing, but do the thoughts go through your head? Is this the right move? That kind of thing. Well, it's funny you say it because I, I do put the coach hat on um, and we've had a bunch of a bunch of team meetings already. And I, I really close with Wayne and we had a lot of conversations over the phone and, and in person uh, uh, leading up to this. And I said, we just kind of, you know, talked about each other's roles and he's, you know, he's a really, he knows the game inside and out, but he knows that uh, another, you know, another veteran, a couple of eyeballs I might see totally open to, to suggestions, totally open to strategy. You know, we just literally just did our debrief from the, this morning's game and we talked about a couple of situations. What if maybe we should do this? And he's open to that. And he's going to, he, when he calls a timeout, we call one kind of timeout today and I come out and gave my two cents worth and he listens and he listens, but he, you know, so he understands that I'm, I'm, you know, we don't always agree on everything, but he knows that I've got another set of eyes and I got a lot of experience. So I'm going to come up with, with some different things. And um, so, yeah, it's, uh, and that being said, we, we made that also very clear that, you know, it was our team coming in, but he's leading it right now. He's the skip. And we made sure that, Hey, you call the game. Our guys will have some input. Hopefully you're okay. And he's sure I'll, I'll hear it. He says, I will, I will plead my case or I'll defend my choice, whatever, but he's totally open to that as, as opposed as the same thing with the boys, they're okay with bringing up uh, uh, some suggestions. So I think it's going to work out well. You've been to, I think 17 Briars. I might be give or two, give or take one or two there. Uh, you've won it four times. Um, and, and people are saying, and there's quite a few people here saying this is the best field ever assembled. What's your thought? I agree. I agree. Just because um, I think I look at it as uh, like we're the ninth ranked team in the country coming into here from last year's CTRS. So the, and the top eight, the eight before us are here. So the top nine teams in our country are out of Briar. That in I can you, you look at the historian, but there's no chance we've had the top nine teams in our country out of Briar ever. It just doesn't it just doesn't happen because of provinces, territories and, 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 and so on and so forth. And then there's only a few below me that are in like it's just it's it's as good as it gets when you when they added those extra three teams. The three wild card really really puts more depth into the Briar and uh, by far um, I think it's the strongest ever and, uh, and good for and again I can't thank the. Um, CCA enough, uh, Curl Canada enough to be able to pull this thing off, and and uh, they put their thinking caps on to make this happen, and uh, it's it's really it's really um, it's really nice to see. Well, it would seem that the fans watching on TV, not in person, obviously, are going to be in for a treat all week here. And what a treat it was to talk to you here, Glenn. I hope you are feeling better, and I hope you get a chance to get in there and uh, and throw a few. Uh, just for the sake of it, right on <laughs> in this well, opportunity. <laughs> thanks, Ted. I, yeah, like I said, I'm I'm really happy I'm here. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's no biggie. But uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing what the boys can do. Uh, I really liked what I saw in the first game, and uh, you know, I think we're a little bit of we're on the underdog uh, side of things. But uh, you don't don't count out W uh, Wild Card three. I'm just saying it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks very much for doing this, Glenn. Have a great day. Folks, you've been watching On the Rocks for Post Media. I'm Ted Wyman.